like to say once more that these are my own personal experiences. The answers, of course, come from my own research and personal experiences and my patients. So they're kind of my view. They may not be absolutely the truth or even if that exists, but I want you to know that this comes from my own experience. Will and destiny. This question comes up a lot. Can these coexist? And in my work I find yes. That destiny really puts you into situations and free will tends to be those decisions or reactions that you make to those situations. For example, destiny may dictate that you meet a particular person at a certain time, perhaps in a certain place, but your free will then determines how you react. So you can accept that person or not accept that person, be with that person or not be with that person. And for example, some of the reasons you may choose not to be may be their height or weight or cultural background or socioeconomic status, things like that. These are your decisions and this is your free will. However, the destiny is that you meet. And this gets into the, another question that is coming from Shirley about soulmates. Soulmates to me are those souls or people with whom you've been together in past lives and once again you're meeting in the current life. So you kind of recognize them. They seem more familiar to you, perhaps at a level that you would not expect from being together, perhaps from such a short period of time. There seems to be a familiarity, a depth of knowing. Sometimes you can finish their questions and relate at a certain vibration that you wouldn't expect from such a short time. And my finding is that frequently you have lived with those people in past lives. And so you recognize them at some level. And this is the familiarity. Of course, this gets into the previous question about destiny and free will, because these are the people we tend to meet again. Soulmates come again together, again and again, to meet, to interact, because they know how to push our buttons, we're learning lessons together, there is karma or destiny together, and so when you meet them, you of course have the free will to stay with them, to not stay with them. Now you can meet a soulmate, and you may be together for 10 minutes or 10 months or 10 years or 100 years. Sometimes the amount of time is not the important part. It is what you do in that time. You come together to learn your lessons, lessons here in this earth plane, this physical state of love and kindness and compassion, not to be prejudiced, not to hate. And, and that's why we often come together with our soulmates. They're kind of our classmates learning in this great earth school that we have here ghosts. Now, many people have seen movies and read in books about ghosts and so there's a very widely varying conception of what ghosts are. To me, what happens at the time of death is that the spiritual consciousness seems to separate from the physical body. We leave the physical body but consciousness certainly does not end with the death of the physical body. We go on and this gets back to that baseline comment that we are spiritual beings, not physical beings, because we survive the death of the physical body. Now as we leave the body, perhaps we can look down and observe the body or scene that we have just left, and then we have a life review, we go on, we get re-energized by oftentimes a beautiful light, we meet with other spiritual beings, we review our life. Ghosts seem to be those souls that don't complete that early part of the journey. They may not go to the light right away. They may not even realize that they are, quote, dead, unquote, since there is no death, I put it in quotes. So they hang around this earth plane, maybe trying to come back into physical form or to interact with physical beings, but it doesn't work that way because they no longer have a physical body. So ghosts are merely those souls who have not yet moved on, and they may be earthbound for a while. They're not dangerous. We're all spiritual beings. We're all souls, and ghosts may just be those souls that have not moved on yet. Now, this is coming, once again, from my own experience, my work, my research with patients and others, 
and my own meditations over many years, and it's much more complex than what I can describe in this short period of time. And so this is just the beginning of the answer for that. Can a soul exist on the other side and in physical form at the same time? And in my experience, the answer would be yes, because the soul is just the smallest part of us. It is as if a pinky finger were dipped into the body and then withdrawn out at the time of physical death. But the greatest part of us, the greater part, is not just in the physical body, but it's on both sides. There really is no distinction. It gets, once again, more complex, but the answer is yes. Souls exist in all dimensions at all times and beyond time. And so a soul can exist in a physical body and yet be existing on the other side and in other dimensions at the very same time. And this gets into a, a related question of what if a soul reincarnates? Are they not going to meet you on the other side? And the answer then is the same. They can meet you on the other side and still be in the body at the same time.